Uh, the thing that people are finding amazing, and I found amazing, I didn't know any of this, and I, and be I believe you and many other people didn't either, uh, and that's that we're actually handing over ownership of our oil and gas. And there's a great deal of confusion around it. Now, uh, when you look at, at what happens, we get, like David's company, Petrol Resources, and they'll get, they'll, they'll get a license or an option on a field. But like, they'll pass 85, farm out 85% of that as they have done to, a, mm. to an oil major. We then fund, uh, we then fund a, a, a country like Uganda. We paid for their oil and gas policy. They, did, they don't surrender their oil and gas. They share it. With the, and and they're, they're broadly in the same position as us. So what we're saying to people is, look, the state which is our trustee, and by the way, the state in the 1937 constitution uh, simply declared that it owns the oil and gas. The state uh, needs to be challenged. And the way that's done is by shifting public opinion and then the political establishment, as, as, as its propensity, will lead from behind once there is a shift in public opinion. And that's what oil and gas is about. OK, well, I, I better put that to the minister, Pat Rabbit. Um, what do you make of all this? Well, uh, you asked Eddie, uh, what are the principles? And he said, A, set up an oil company, and B, ensure you have a slow rate of extraction. A slow rate of, of what extraction? We haven't found any oil. Well, Minister Rabbit is ever, ever the man for the quip and uh, the put down, uh, but he needs to be challenged on the facts here. And uh, the facts are, first of all, provided for us by the oil companies themselves. And the oil companies themselves estimate that there is about 180 billion barrels of oil or gas equivalent off our coastline. I hope that uh, is. I'll just show you one document, for example. This is from an oil company, and it says about the Irish Atlantic margin. This is produced by an oil company for an oil company, and it says proven oil and gas fields, multiple finds. Uh, Geology analogous to UK, Norway and Canadian Atlantic. Uh, the fact of the matter is that there, there may well be potential out there, but at the rate of drilling of less than two wells on average over the last dozen years, we'll never find out. And what is the merit of leaving it in the ground? We very badly need that kind of injection uh, if it is there and if we can find it. Yeah, but the point is that if uh, somebody does find oil, off the coast of Ireland in our territorial waters that belongs to us uh, according to the terms of the Constitution as Eddie pointed out we're going to be giving it to them for practically nothing. Well in, in 40 years uh, that hasn't happened we're not giving it to them for <coughs> practically nothing. But uh, as you say there's a, a, a tax on profits of 25 to 40 percent but they can write off everything they spent uh, in the country uh, against that bef before they get to the profits and there's no guarantee that there will be a single Irish job created out of any find that is found and there's no guarantee that will help in any way with our energy security no. if there is a find. I think what's afoot here is that there is a very polite campaign going in Dorky to protect Dorky from any prospect of drilling offshore and I'd like to protect Dorky too but instead of setting about it the way they did in North Mayo they've decided to write a book. Ah. And Eddie has brought together a number of people of a singular point of view okay. to write a book. And the hope Sorry. is that it will scare away any prospect of drilling in off Dalky, and therefore, as he says in the book, keep it in the ground. Now, unfortunately, I live in the real world. No, well, you could do an awful lot know. better than that tripe that I've been listening to for the last few minutes. For heaven's sake, Pat. The situation is that the amount of wells that were drilled pre-1987 when we had high taxes, when we had royalties and when we had production sharing is three times higher than the amount drilled according to the data on your, on your, own, on your own website collated by us at Owner Oil. That's a fact. Collated oh, wrongly, But just put, to put that to you, Minister, you're talking tripe according to uh, Eddie Hobbs and you say that the figures on your website are collated wrongly, is that it? 
I didn't say anything of the kind. I said, said Eddie collects them no, wrongly. Yes. <laughs> Ireland's offshore porcupine basin is a hydrocarbon province, and that our recent work identified a number of high potential prospects, at least one we believe has a billion barrel potential. Okay, I want to bring in the other two uh, guests first. Have that they succeeded? is their assessment, and multiple assessments. Have they succeeded? There have also been, uh, SIP2 produced a report showing 18 fines, all of which are under assessment, officially under assessment. There was, as I pointed out to Minister Abbott a couple of weeks ago in the door, when I brought in a sample of oil taken from the, from the Connemara field, Stat Oil took an entire tanker of oil. Fair, they had technological problems to do with pressure, but technology has moved on. Oh. And, and importantly, uh, oil prices have risen. So the interest of oil companies and the value of these prospects and fines is far greater today okay. can, than it was then. And can frankly, I bring in, can I, sorry, sorry, can I bring in David Horgan of uh, Petrol Resources? Now, you, you're involved in the oil industry, so uh, on the one hand, you want to paint a picture to potential investors that there's a potential bonanza out there. On the other hand, you want to convince Minister Rabbit, Rabbit here that uh, it's very difficult to extract oil, so you should have a, a lenient uh, taxation regime. Yeah, the reality is that only 6% of Irish waters are licensed. That's the real scandal. And the minister took a very brave step three years ago by throwing up a, a big section of the Atlantic to bids. At the time, the industry dismissed it. They said it was unsuccessful. Only juniors bid. And yet 12 of the 13 licenses granted have been converted into frontier exploration licenses. So he's been vindicated. But it was a huge step. And what they should do now is follow that success with another bid round, encouraging more players to come in. Hold on a second, though. Carob, Carob according to an insider estimate in 2003, which is Wood Mackenzie, the very firm that Minister Rabbit is now convinced to come in to do a review of our, uh, value, you know, where, of our value proposition, right? Wood Mackenzie, you know, based on their data, an insider estimate, was that at best we'd get 7%, somewhere between nothing and 7% of the billions of potential gas revenues out of Corrib, which was estimated at 9 billion. We get nada. Now, globally, the na one, one second, now, globally, the national take is between 60 and 80 percent. We're getting nothing or next, you know, we'll make more out of lobster fishing in Corrib than we're going out of, uh, we're going to make not, out of gas. But That's Eddie, the tragedy. But Eddie, is there not an argument where it's very difficult to get oil off our coast, there's very oh, yeah. difficult conditions, and it's very expensive to I'm do? I'm not here to argue otherwise. Right. I'm not here to argue. What I'm here to, what I'm here to say quite clearly, because Minister Rabb has been Minister for Energy about 8 percent of the time since Justin Keating, is that there is no difference there's captive group think between the regulator and the regulated, and they're ch they're not they're chiming off the same off, off the same sheet. And I think that's a tragedy for the owners of the oil and gas, and that's why we're intervening. Well, the minister is repeating the propaganda of the oil companies who want to keep the tax regime low, but in fact, but, but what, why, what the oil why companies would they do that if they're not exploring. They like are exploring. There are licenses out there. They have licenses. They, we've had significant discoveries. Providence Resources reporting over a billion barrels in one, uh, in one discovery. But 6% six, six of the water is actually explored. Yeah, there are sweet yeah, spots. But, but they, they have already identified geological features which are very, very similar to uh, the, the features that you have in Norway and other places where there's a lot of gas and oil. There have been uh, many discoveries uh, over the years. And but they are telling us. Viable. No, that's what the oil companies. And well, one point, David, 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 one very important point is you see, in Norway, the state puts its own people on the oil rigs to monitor what the oil companies are doing. They, they, Here, you have nobody. Uh, Minister, we have no reason that, uh, to believe that Wood Mackenzie would be anything other than independent. But the, the, the issue there that's raised about the comparison with Apple you know, comp big multinational companies employ big multinational firms of accountants and they run rings around the tax laws. Well, I mean, if that uh, argument is true, I mean, why do you make a distinction in the case of the oil companies? I mean, you're saying that IT companies do it. But I mean, not the doing, fact of the matter is with our they all be, engage in financial engineering and tax efficiency planning and all the rest. The point is, David, that if we find Norwegian-style oil, we will have Norwegian-style taxes. And there is nothing that I can do, even if I wanted to, to prevent the Minister for Finance of the day going into the Doyle and changing the Finance Act. But first of all, I'd like to know that we have some oil. We haven't found any oil yet. And yet you have all this noise about me giving away oil, selling it for nothing, the oil companies coming in and taking it. They didn't find any yet. And what we're trying to do, because the geological and other data is positive, we're trying to encourage 
enough exploration activity off the Irish shore that hopefully we will have a find. Okay, well let's put, that, let's put that to Richard Boyd Barrett. Why not find the oil first and then uh, well, get, get the revenue out of the oil uh, uh, Because the regime is such that even if we do find it, we will get nothing. No jobs, no security of supply, and the tax write-offs on even that incredibly low 25% are such that we will not get a cent from it. Uh, I mean, the idea that all costs incurred by the oil company could be written off going back 25 years means that they will find every, everything, every cup of tea that they drink can be written off against uh, tax, and we will get nothing from it. There is no oh. value for Irish citizens. Well, the reason I'm looking at it, uh, Richard. And if I could just make this the, point, the, the, reason, that, the, the reason I'm looking at it, Richard, on, on the is, is to have a complete look at whether our fiscal regime uh, is fit for purpose. And yourself and the Oireachtas Committee and all the rest can feed into that. The stakeholders. The Oireachtas Committee has said we should uh, raise, the, the, raise I, the taxes. I, I know what it has said, uh, Richard. You're, but, but you're listening to the oil companies. But you were banging a drum for me to do precisely what mm -hmm. I have done. That's I have true. now brought in people who are familiar with the industry across 126 who are connected with the industry. industry. And <coughs> when we see their proposals, let's then uh, okay. examine it and yeah, discuss quick, it then. Yeah. Quick word, the, the Minister has absolutely made the case why all Owner Oil is required to go and talk directly to the <coughs> owners of the assets because the trustee is failing the very owners of the assets. And, 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 and as regards royalty and all, of, and, and all of that, you look at any study and Ireland is by far the most generous giveaway regime in the world where we're handing it over for well, a okay. I want to go very quickly to the and, audience. And read the book, Minister, well, and it's nothing to do with that Dawkey. Is okay. 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 The whole purpose of the uh, consultancy going on at the moment, which will be finished by the end of May, I will announce the new round uh, by the middle of June. Okay. Uh, the whole purpose is to try and uh, provide certainty, uh, provide openness okay. and transparency in terms of how it was arrived at, and I can assure you that if there were Norwegian size fines. There will be Norwegian size taxes. Okay, and with, that, with that, we'll have to leave it. It's Pass a romantic Ramos. argument. At Pass the Ramos, Richard Boyd Barrett, David Horgan, and Eddie Hobbs. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in a moment to discuss the mysterious world of lobbying and asking just how much influence former players in politics can have when they move to the other side. Do join us then.